So a lot of folks are always asking me how to make projection mapping content inside of Touch Designer, and they're often confused by UV maps and how they work. A UV map is really simply just all of the different sides and faces of a geometry flattened onto a 2D surface that you can then draw on or place different content on. And once you have this kind of 2D outline and layout of all the different faces, you can put content on it, you can mark it up, do anything you want, and it'll all get reapplied back correctly when you use those textures as a material. So in this example, I'm going to create a UV map for a box sop directly inside of Touch Designer, which a lot of folks don't know you can really do, which is a cool trick. Now this isn't as good or as powerful as doing this in a dedicated 3D modeling application like Cinema 4D, because you won't have as many controls for how the layouts get created, different versions of the layouts, being able to draw directly on the model and have that appear on your UV map. But this can be really great either in a pinch or if you're just using some simpler geometry that you want to create a quick UV map for. So I'm going to take you through building all of this. The first thing I want to do is delete everything. And I'm going to start by making a simple render setup here with a box sop. And I'm going to go ahead and do a little trick where I right click on the output of a sop, switch over to the comp family, click geometry, and now I have my box perfectly connected and ready to go for rendering. I want to create a camera. I'll need one of those for my rendering setup. I'll create a constant material. And on my geometries render page, I'm going to assign my constant as the material. And then I'm going to go ahead and make my render top here. Now the interesting thing that we're going to use, the feature that got added to Touch Designer a little while ago and, and many people don't know, is that in the render mode, there's actually a bunch of different ways you can render stuff. You know, you got cube maps, fish eyes, and dual paraboloids for 360 and dome content. But we also have one called UV Unwrap. And what UV Unwrap is going to do is very similar to how you might see in Cinema 4D or, or anything else. It's going to take the geometry and basically lay it out flat on the canvas here. Now, in this case, we're actually just seeing a full white box. And that's because the box itself is white, our material is white, and thus all of the sides that are getting flattened out are white. Now, we could do a number of different things uh, to get around this. For example, if you already have a UV map, you could apply it to the color map of the constant and it would be flattened out here. But let's assume that we actually don't have a UV map and we're trying to make one from scratch. Now, we know that the box itself has six different sides. So that's not too many, and what I can do is use a couple of little tricks to just color each side a little bit differently right on the geometry itself. So what I'm going to do is move my box back a little bit. I'm going to right click on the wire, click insert operator, and I'm going to make a primitive SOP. And a primitive SOP is a SOP that allows you to perform some kind of operation on each individual face of that geometry that you have. So what I can do is go to the attributes here, and when I have color, I can click on keep color and change it to add color, which is gonna allow us to write some expressions that let us change the color of each side of this primitive. So what I'm gonna do is click on color here to get the drop down, and you can already see there's a little bit of Python here that says me.inputcolor012, and that basically just does a pass through of the current colors. I'm gonna use a nice little trick because I know that inside of this primitive SOP, I actually have access to the index of each one of the primitives. And what I mean by that is if I right click in the active viewer, click display option, and find my little primitive numbers here, we can see these pink numbers actually tell us the index number of each one. So we can see zero, one, two, three, four on the bottom, five on the top. So zero to five, remember is six because we're starting at a zero. But I can use those index numbers to give each one a slightly different shade of gray by taking that index number and dividing it by six. So the easy way to do that is in each one of these, I'm going to type the same expression, which is me dot input prim, which gives us a list of all of the primitives inside of it. 
And for the current one that I am on, I'm going to get the index and then I'm going to divide that by six. Now, once I write that once, I can essentially just copy and paste it into each one of the R, G, and B. And what you'll see is now each side of our primitive has a different shade of gray. And sometimes this can be a little bit difficult to see inside of viewers just because, you know, there's a little bit of shading and lighting that you see here that changes that. But what you'll notice is if we go back to our UV unwrap now, now we have six distinct different shades of gray here that represent each one of the box sides. Now, before we go too much farther, it's actually important to take a look at the resolution that we have here, because by default, our render top is 1280 by 720. Now, what you can almost even see here is that these squares aren't perfectly square. And that's because Touch Designer tries to use all available pixels that we give it inside of our texture to create our UV unwrap. Now that's not really ideal for us, especially since we're working with a box where all the sides are perfectly square. And let's say for our example that we are going to make a 512 pixel by 512 pixel texture for each one of these sides. So what I can do is go to my render, go to the common page and actually define a new resolution here because I know if each one of these is supposed to be 512 long, then my width of this texture is going to be 512 times three. And then I know very similarly, if it's 512 by 512, my height should be 512 times two. And you'll see now that I've done that, I have these perfect squares inside of my texture here, and I have a really good UV map that I can use. Now, you shouldn't be terribly concerned if you do see some of this stretching because even if this UV map gets stretched out a little bit, once you go back and reapply it on the geometry, as long as you're following the UV map, it's just going to get stretched in the opposite direction so that it'll look correct when you get back to the actual geometry. I still prefer to avoid it because in most cases, I don't want to be stretching my textures up and down a lot. I kind of want to keep things at their proper pixel, you know, aspect ratios, resolutions, and all these good things. So now that I have this essentially UV map, this is where, you know, people start to get a little bit confused with the concept because this is essentially just this box unfolded onto a flat surface. Now there's a lot of folks who I think at this point would be better off taking this texture, you know, doing something like right clicking and saving the image, going over to Photoshop, doing something like tracing the outline so they're not just gray boxes. You could even do something that's really useful that I like to do, which is put big text numbers on each one of the boxes. That way what you can do is import that texture back into Touch Designer, apply it as the color map on the constant, and you can see all of your different outlinings, your labelings right on the geometry itself, just to give yourself a little bit more orientation inside of this render setup. But for now, we're gonna keep it pretty simple. We're just gonna take this, and what I even like to do in some of these situations is I'll put a null top after my render, and I'll go ahead and just lock this. Now when I've locked this, it basically becomes unchangeable by anything else happening in Touch Designer. I could even disconnect the input. It's kind of like saving the texture, but directly inside of the project. I don't recommend it all the time, especially for big textures, because it's just going to make your project very bloated and bigger file size. But for this test, it's fine. So now that I have this, this is where the magic of these UV unwraps and UV maps really comes to light. Because now that I have this layout of the different sides of my box, I can start drawing on it, I can start adding content to it, compositing on top of it, knowing that if I go edge to edge inside of each of these little boxes, these little rectangles, or I should say squares, it would map perfectly back onto the square faces of my geometry. So for example, I like making this piece of test content that I always make, which is kind of like the tracer outline look that you'll see on a lot of projection mapping. So I do this very quickly with two different operators. The first one is a rectangle top. And now it's important to start thinking about what we said earlier, which is we want the resolution of each face to be 512 by 512. So in my rectangle top, I'll update the resolution to be 512 by 512. 
I'll go ahead and turn on the border width here. And you can see now we have a black border. And then I'll go ahead and make the size bigger until I am at size one and one, which gives me the full edge to edge rectangle with a border. Now what I'm gonna do is get rid of the center of this, only keep the border, but I'll make the border white. And then what I can do is animate the border kind of tracing around itself. So to do this, I'll start with making my border color white instead of black. And then I'll make my fill color, actually I'll just take the alpha to zero. So now I have this outline. Now a really cool trick that I like doing is using a ramp top for these kind of animations. Because I can make a ramp top, I can go into its type here, change it to radial, and you'll see that I have this white to black kind of radial ramp. Now the nice thing is what I can do is go to this period and start playing with it a little bit. And then what I can do is take the phase and as you can see, as I start changing the phase, I'm essentially just having this ramp up and down. So I'll go ahead and put something into here like abs time dot frame multiplied by 0 0.01. And here's that expression if you like to see it. And essentially what that does is it just takes the frame counter from the project and then multiplies it by a small number just so that it doesn't move too fast. Because if I actually got rid of this, we wouldn't see any change happening here because it's actually just moving around too quickly. So multiplying this abs time by frame number by a small number makes it rotate around a little slower. And if you want it to go even slower, make that number smaller. If you want to go even faster, you know, make that number bigger. But I prefer around 0.01 seems to be a good number here. So now you can play with this ramp to get different looks. So for example, what I like to do is actually not have the white go all the way around. So I'm gonna click in the ramp area to create a new handle. And I'll just drag the dark area so that we can see now that it's, it's just a small bit of white and then it kind of fades off here. Now the cool part is I can take these both into a multiply top. And I now have this essential ramp tracing animation ready to go. Now how you want to play with this, this is up to you. This is just a very simple example to get up and running with and it's a common thing that you might see when you're looking at different projection mapping experiments. So the cool part comes into play is now that I have my UV map and I have some test content here and I'll go ahead and put a null after this. So it can really be as simple as taking your UV map and putting stuff over that UV ramp, or UV map here. So let me put a null at the end here. And first thing I'm gonna do is inside of my overtop, I don't want this to be stretched all the way. So I'm gonna say prefit overlay is gonna be native resolution. And then what I can do is take this box and I can just move it over and put it around and fit it inside of that one box that I have on the UV map. So let me bring it up here, let me scale it up a little bit. And actually, you know what? The scale is probably not correct because I forgot to change the ramp here. So let me go to the ramp and set its resolution to 512. By 512, and now inside of my over, there we go. Now I have the proper resolution here. So all it is is a matter of transforming this so that it's inside of the correct box. And I will show you some tricks to do this a little bit easier, but just to demonstrate, what I can now do is take this null that I have here with my UV map and my little piece of content on top of it, and I can reference it as the color map of my constant material. And then in my render, what I can do is, I don't really need this UV unwrap anymore, but I'll just leave it there for now. So I'll make a separate render that's just gonna be a standard 2D look at my geometry. And then in my camera, I'm gonna have the camera look at the geometry. And this way it's just, it'll be easier for me to spin around and look at different sides of the rendered content. So now as I translate X, we can see I'm translating around the X, but also still staying 
looking at this object. And let's find the side that has the content on it. There it is. So now you can see that we have our one side mapped and ready to go. And just like we did, that perfect square texture that we made of content is mapped and ready to go. So now at this point, there's a couple things I would recommend is one, you don't really need this primitive SOP anymore. And in fact, it's actually messing up the colors of your render. So I'd usually just bypass that or get rid of it. Secondly, you usually don't want to send the UV map texture also back onto the geometry. You, you usually just want your content. So I like to put something like a level top after my UV map so that whenever I want, I can just turn the opacity down and just be left with my content. And then similarly, you usually should fill up all of your different box faces if you want, for example, or your geometry with its proper texture. And there's a little trick I like doing, especially when I'm working with boxes where we can see this is a three column by two row grid. And I can take this single object and make this three by two grid here very quickly using the layout top. So I'm gonna drop in a layout top. I'm gonna to turn on the scale resolution just so that it doesn't try and pack everything into one small resolution. I'm gonna set the align to be grid rows. And then here I can just set the max rows and columns. So I know that I have two rows and three columns. So two rows, three columns, and now the trick here comes that I can just keep taking my null and plugging it into the layout over and over again. And we can see it's starting to make that automatic grid formation for us. And now we have essentially the same grid of our UV map, but filled with that same piece of content. So back in my over, I can actually just get rid of the transforms that I had put in place. We can see everything matches up perfectly. And if I go to my box, we'll see as I move the camera around, all of the sides are mapped correctly, cleanly, and ready to go for projection mapping. Now, this is just really simple content that I've been using here, this kind of trick of making a ramp and a rectangle. But this can be anything. You know, you can take this UV map, like I said, put it into Photoshop, put some markings on it to orient yourself with the 2D version of your kind of geometry versus the 3D version. Then you could bring that into After Effects, Houdini, even back into Touch Designer where you're gonna make more content. And then as long as you're making content that respects the layout that you've created here, it will map exactly like this perfectly back onto your geometry. Now, in this case, I've gone ahead and just made this one, you know, per face texture but you could just as easily take something like a movie file in or any kind of bigger texture that maybe you want to have composited across the geometry. And you'll see if we look in the geometry viewer, it actually gets mapped all around the geometry to different places because we can see the order. And this is why the orientation is important because even though our geometry kind of maps, you know, looks like across these three different sides, these three sides aren't all, you know, in the perfect orientation to show our banana. We can see here that two of them are kind of connected, but then one of them is the bottom. So having that orientation helps, but this is the general idea behind using UV maps and a nice trick on how to create some UV maps inside of Touch Designer. Hey folks, thanks for watching. If you're serious about learning touch designer and getting into our interactive and immersive industry, I highly recommend you check out the interactive and immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can click the link in the description to learn more about that. And if you like this video, hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and click on the little bell icon for more awesome free content.